The Holy Gospel according to Mark. I will be adding four verses to our gospel up front here to to add more on to the gospel reading for today. It begins with verse 27. Jesus went on with his disciples to the village of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist and others Elijah and still others, one of the prophets. He asked them, Well, who do you say that I am? And Peter answered him, You are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. You pick up with your bulletin. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are set in your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. But what will profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what they can give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will be also ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. If any want to become my followers, he says, let them first deny themselves, take up their cross, and then follow me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O God, my Lord, my rock, and my redeemer. Amen. I just sense that the words that I need to start off with are, but you promised us. I think it's basically, maybe that's what Peter was saying that day. You promised me. You promised Andrew. You promised all of us. What are you you saying now? That's why I wanted to add those first few verses, because Peter declares who Jesus is. He is the Messiah. Jesus started the conversation by saying, who do you say that I am? But shush, don't tell anybody. What? Don't tell anyone. He began to teach. I must suffer, he says. I will be rejected. I will be killed. You're a Messiah. And then three days later, I will rise again. But Peter didn't want anything to do with that. Jesus, you promised. You promised not only me, but everybody else, that you would be here for us. What are you saying now? It can't be true. We left everything to follow you. And Jesus said to Peter, stop, I will have none of this. Stop and listen to me. It's not up to you. How dare you question? Get behind me. Listen why I teach. Listen why I preach. So you learn. For you don't understand, Peter. You just don't get it. What do you think about Peter's objections? That he would stand in front of all and basically challenge his Messiah, the Master, the Lord, Jesus the Christ. 
Do they make sense? I mean, after all, he did leave. Jesus came and said, come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. He and Andrew left their livelihood, their families, their boats. The other disciples left what they were supposed to be doing. People are swarming in to hear Jesus preach. They, too, left things. Considerable sacrifice. For Jesus was to be with them. Always with them. And now he says it's not going to happen. They left everything to follow this Nazarene, the promised one. And now he's changing the story a bit. Perhaps they thought he was breaking a promise. Up to this point, all was good. Things made sense. He had come. He was talking good things. We're going to be saved. God is there for us. God loves us. They witnessed his teaching, his preaching. They witnessed him healing, him feeding, and loving. And now he talks about suffering and death. He proclaims it all to hear. If you want to follow me, you too must suffer. You too must die. You too must take up the cross and deny your life. Who's ready to do just that? Who's ready? I imagine most were stunned at the revelation. It's not what they thought they signed up for. When's the last time we've ever felt abandoned? How often do we even think that way? When was it the last time that we had a promise that might have been broken by somebody? We didn't know where to turn. We too suffered feelings unknown to us. Changes in our attitude. Perhaps we got to self-pity. We use these times to allow ourselves to get away with saying things and doing things that is just not who we are. We don't worry about the things that we say until it's too late. Until that time comes when we too maybe have that get behind me Satan moment in our lives. Because we don't know how to handle what has just happened in our lives. How many of us feel abandoned by God at times? Those broken or unfulfilled promises, those unanswered prayers, if you will. The expectation that this, our God is going to come into our life, this omnipotent, this all-powerful, this mighty God that we adore, that we per- worship, we, we expect that God to come into our lives. And when it doesn't happen, we feel left out. We feel on our own like we're outcasted. This morning's gospel, it's really a simple gospel. Follow, deny, take up. To ask ourselves why when we say we want more and when it doesn't happen, we claim that God doesn't come to us. So why do we need to do and follow and to deny, and to take up. I mean, God, isn't he changing the story when he doesn't come and answer our prayer? Isn't that not part of the deal? He changes things on us. What are we, where do we go now? What do we do now? Do we really know what we are supposed to do? what I think is the beauty of this gospel reading this morning. God knows. God knows. He came into our lives at our baptisms. God knows. He cries with us when we cry. God knows. He suffers with us. He walks with us. When we suffer, when we walk, 
when we scream with joy and excitement, he screams with joy and excitement. God knows. When we hurt, he hurts. When we feel good, he feels good. God loves us. God knows us. This is the God that Jesus speaks about in the parable today. He speaks about to his disciples today. That he tells Peter to get behind him today. See, Jesus' focus is not on just the human nature. Because he is human and fully divine. Jesus is concentrating on the divinity of life as well. God sent himself to us. The divine part. He comes to us in the form of a baby. Homeless. Itinerant. He becomes a migrant preacher, walking around, wandering town to town, teaching and preaching. God comes to us as a simple, common man, living alongside those of us. Then suddenly, he comes to find out that he needs to be executed. He will suffer, he will die, and he will go to a borrowed tomb, only to raise three days later. And he won't even be recognized at first. I have to ask, does this sound like a broken promise to you? I think not. Jesus is teaching hugely this time. Wanting all of us to hear with our entire hearts. To follow does mean to deny. To deny does mean to take up. But it is the only way. It is the only way to know the depth of God's love for us. His presence in our lives. His purpose for our lives. It's the only way to know how much His cross bears the weight of us. And that's a lot of weight. Our brokenness, our sinfulness. To follow, to deny, to take up is the only way we come to feel what God feels when we love, when somebody we love cries out for our help. Then we can get a glimpse into God's heart. To follow, to deny, to take up all works together so that we can know that the promise is never broken. And we are never, ever abandoned by God our Father. They witnessed back in the day Jesus' is teaching and his preaching. They witnessed his healing, him feeding thousands, him just being a presence and loving them. He tells them, if you want to follow me, by all means do. But you must first deny yourselves. You must die to yourselves. And you must pick up a cross. Perhaps not the cross like this, but your cross. This is the cross of Jesus. And then Jesus says, I did not break my promise to you. He told him that day, this is my promise to you. When he told Peter to get behind him, he said, this is my promise to you. I am here. God is here. We are going nowhere. So I ask you this Lenten season, together, as a congregation, as a people of God, that we decide to follow Christ Jesus full heart on with our whole hearts that we do this, to recognize that we are sinful and that we are broken. That you join us on Wednesday nights. That you join us on Sunday mornings. That you join us in prayer every single day, no matter where you're at. Proclaiming the fact that Jesus Christ is dying for us this season. He will hang on the cross for the sins of us, for many. But he will raise from the dead on Easter Sunday, as it is promised. No promises are broken. 
his promise is fulfilled. The promise of Christ Jesus through God our Father. Amen.